Imagine if you woke up one day and you were told that you were going to be on the front lines of a battle, but you were not given any training, armor, or weapons. Would you be victorious against your enemy? Would you win the battle? Perhaps another question we should ask is, would you even survive? And if you survived, would you be in the same mental state you were in before that battle? Probably not. This is what happened to health workers all over the world with the COVID-19 pandemic. They woke up one day and found themselves as soldiers on the front lines of a battle they really were not prepared for. Though many people could stay at home during lockdowns and avoid the virus and be safe, health workers had to go to work and they had to fight. So the question is, why were they not prepared? COVID-19 is a new virus. So when the pandemic started, we really didn't have much to defend ourselves with. We were still trying to understand the virus. We didn't have drugs, there were no vaccines. And so the only real thing we had as a line of defense was something called infection prevention and control, IPC. It's a technical term, but it's essentially what people all over the world have now learned how to do. We wash our hands, we wear masks, we keep our distance from others, we clean our environment, we disinfect things, we avoid crowded spaces, we prefer ventilated spaces. These are all parts, important parts of IPC. But when you talk about IPC at the level of the health facility, it's much more intense because you have health workers on a different type of front line. These are people who are faced with sick patients all day long, coming face to face with the virus day in and day out. Though IPC has been our only line of defense against COVID-19, it's actually not meant to be something we use as just a response to a pandemic. It's meant to be something that helps us prevent a pandemic in the first place, because we don't know when the next patient or who the next patient zero will be, the first case of the next outbreak epidemic or pandemic. It could happen anywhere at any time. But before COVID, how many of us were diligent about washing our hands frequently? How many of us were paying attention to our bodies and our health and the health of those around us? Not that many. So though IPC is a life-saving practice, it's unfortunately not something that we use in our daily lives. In addition, for health workers, it's not something that we're teaching them in school. So they graduate, they go to work, potentially to enter the front lines of some battle of an unknown virus that they may face, and yet they're not given the skills they need to succeed and to be safe while they're doing that. And this is a huge problem. In a country like Nigeria and in many other countries around the world, we already have a shortage of health workers. And so we can't afford to keep having them get infected and possibly dying on the job. As we speak now, we've had thousands of health workers infected with COVID-19 and thousands have died. And if we lose all our soldiers in this battle, who is going to care for the sick people? That's why during this pandemic, while many others were looking at investments in infrastructure, materials, equipment that were needed to fight the virus, which are very important as well, we as an organization were focused on investing in the frontline soldiers. We were focused on supporting them to ensure that they had what they needed to be safe while at work. How could we build their capacity to identify COVID? How could we build their capacity to contain it and also to remain safe and ensure they don't get infected while doing the work that many of us cannot do? But this wasn't just about their technical skills. We had to support them in their level of readiness and preparedness to fight this battle. And you'd be surprised how far even just a little encouragement can go in building someone's ability to face something unknown. As human beings, we're generally fearful of things that are uncertain or unknown. I remember there was a case of a nurse who came to us and he was afraid. He was paralyzed by fear. He felt that he didn't sign up for this. He just wanted to treat patients, but he wasn't interested in all this COVID stuff. And really, he wanted to stay at home, but he had to go to work. And so when he came to us, um, we realized that he had done a lot of research on his own. He had a lot of misinformation. And so we started by, first of all, understanding his fears. He had to go to work to provide for his family, but he was afraid. He was afraid of getting to work, getting infected and bringing it back to his family. And so the first thing we did was understand those fears, which were valid, and help him to understand how he could be safe. We taught him the skills he needed to be on the job and do his work in a way that would protect himself, but still provide the care needed for his patients. We also helped him address his fears by helping him simulate and go through scenarios of what he would face on that battlefield so that he could then be comfortable when those things occurred in real life. And I can say that by the end of his time with us, he was bold. He was ready and he was prepared to go and do what needed to be done so that he could provide for his family. So where do we go from here? The truth is that we mustn't stop what we're doing now. 
We need to embed this level of preparedness in our daily activities. We as individuals have to keep washing our hands, have to keep paying attention to our health, have to keep seeking professional help when we're sick and ensuring we don't just self-medicate and assume we know what's wrong with us. But in addition to that, we need to train our soldiers. We need to ensure that we have people at our land borders, our seaports, our airports, in our communities, in our schools, in our hospitals, who are trained and able to identify public health threats and stop them before they become big problems for the rest of us. We have to invest in our manpower and in our human resource. Every single person has a role to play. And only then can we know that we're safe and ready to win the battle against the next unknown enemy.